Hi everyone, it's Lauren. Happy summer. I'm so excited you decided to join me today to make your very own creature, monster, pinch pot, fun, imaginative project today with the library. So you should have all picked up your pottery pack, which should include the following. You'll be getting a chunk of clay in a bag. And just so you know, I did use precautions when I was packaging all of this using um, my mask and I was wearing gloves. So feel, feel good about that these should not have um, any germs or way to spread that. I was really cautious when packing them. And also in your kit, you should have received a toothpick. So those two things. Today, we're gonna be creating very cool pinch pot monsters. This is my example, right? He has this cute little tail and I put some texture onto his back where his eyes are and he has this big mouth. Cause I thought, how cute would this be sitting on a counter if I could stick something in there? I don't know, even if you made the mouth big enough, you could use it as like a sponge holder on your sink at home. Like that'd be kind of cool to see, but you get to use your creative imagination to make a monster of your very own. Okay, so let's talk about how we're gonna do that today. Like I said in your kit, you have a lump of clay and you have a toothpick. The toothpick's primarily for making textures or designs if you need to, because um, a lot of this we're just gonna do with our hands when we make a pinch pot. Um, now, another thing that was not included in your kit, but if you're planning to join any pieces of clay together, you're gonna want some vinegar, which I'm hoping everyone has in their house, because you only need a teeny tiny little bit. This is my clay vinegar that I use all the time, which is why it's kind of cloudy looking, but you can use any kind of vinegar, white, apple cider, it doesn't matter. The great thing about vinegar is when you take two pieces of clay and paint on a little vinegar between it, what it starts to do, first it makes the clay a little bit wet, but all the stuff, the acids inside the vinegar start to break down the clay a little bit so that when it fully dries, it fuses it together. It's so cool. It works great. I love that trick. And I think it's pretty easy to do, which is why I wanted to suggest it to you today. So when you get your kit, what you wanna do is take your piece of clay and you can decide, cause I wanted to add some things on my monster. So I'm not using my whole entire clump of clay, but I, I ripped off a pretty good piece, okay? And what I'm doing now is just kind of rounding it and making a ball in my hands. So you can see the size of this, right? Have you guys ever played pool before? It kind of reminds me of the size of like a pool ball, like, right? So I am just trying to smooth this and make it into a great circle so that I can make it into a cool pinch pot monster. So the first step when you have this, you make it into a ball. And all I'm doing is just adding a little bit of pressure, slowly turning it in my hands to kind of smooth it out and make a good ball shape. Now you need to figure out, are you a righty or a lefty? I'm a righty. So I'm gonna hold my ball of clay in my left hand, kind of cradle it like this, and I'm gonna use my right hand and my thumb to start the pinch pot process. So I'm gonna hold it in my left hand. I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna slowly press in. I don't wanna go through all the way, so that's a no-no. But I'm gonna kinda of press, right? Oh, perfect. So this is the start to our pinch pot. And now what I'm gonna do is hold it in my left hand and I'm gonna slowly put my thumb in and turn it and I'm pressing like this from the inside and the side here. I'm kind of squeezing together a little, not a lot, just a little bit. So I'm gonna squeeze and then turn my ball. Squeeze, look at you can even see my fingerprints. Squeeze and turn my ball. So I'm gonna keep doing this, this pinching motion to make the base part, the whole body, the big part of my monster. So I'm slowly turning this and I'm just pinching a little bit. My goal is to have the, all the sides be approximately the same thickness. And the thickness that I'm going for is kind of like my pinky or one of my fingers. I don't want the clay to be much thinner than that because I want it to be tough and strong and stand up to when I'm making it. So I'm just slowly turning that. And then eventually I wanna pinch this bottom area because this is generally, a lot of times when I make pinch pots, this part ends up being thicker. 
because I didn't push through very far because I was nervous I would go through all the way. So what you want to do eventually, I'm going to stick both my thumbs in this hole and then pinch with the ends of my fingers. Can you see that? To kind of make the bottom thin and the same thickness as all the piece. I want everything to be that same thickness when I'm making it. So pinch, 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 get in the bottom. See how I have both of my hands doing it now? When it gets to a certain size, you can actually start putting your both hands inside and squeezing with both thumbs. Here, let me put this down a little so you can see a little bit better, right? So I'm making my sides all the same thickness, right? It's perfect. Okay, so I think this is a pretty great size so far. So I'm gonna go ahead with this. Now, if you notice, see like how I have a couple cracks on my piece? The best tool you can possibly use are your fingers. Best clay tool ever. So I could just take my fingers and kind of smooth out where I see some cracks. Now, a thing about clay is the more we use our hands with it, the more it sucks out all the moisture in the clay that goes into our hands. So it makes the clay a little bit dry. So if you really, really need to, you could get a small like little bowl with some water and you could dip your finger in there and kind of use some water to smooth it if you need to. If you don't have to do that though, I try not to. I think your, your finger works better. But I'm just smoothing out. See, those marks are gone now just from my finger smoothing. It's perfect. So now I have this great pinch pot shape, right? It's so cute already. Now you can decide if you wanna do like I did. My pinch pot, you can see, I set him down on a table and kind of made him more like an oval so he would sit there. You could decide that your pinch pot, your monster's like this, like he's coming up out of the ground. You could make little teeth and eyeballs on the side. You can make your monster however you want. I just thought it was kind of fun to do a sideways one. So if you wanna do the sideways one like I did, this is what you do. I'm gonna move the camera down so you can see my table, okay? Do, do. Okay, I think that's good. So all I do is take my circle and I'm gonna to go to the table and I'm just gonna lightly tap. Can you see that? So it's kind of making that bottom Perfect. Okay, so now I have this really cool shape. It's kind of like an oval, but it's flat and it's gonna sit. This is just like what I did for the screen one. He's gonna sit on the table perfectly, which is so cute. So now, now is the fun part. We get to decide what is our monster gonna look like? What characteristics is he gonna have? Will he just have two eyes like this one? Will he have like one huge cyclops? Like will he be a cyclops with one big eye? What do you wanna do? So now you're gonna take your extra clay and decide how you want to embellish or design your whole pinch pot monster. So I'm gonna take a piece of clay. I think I'm gonna make a cyclops. Oh, maybe I'll make a three-eyed monster. Okay, I'm gonna do a three-eyed monster. So that means I need to make three circles to start for me. So I'm taking my clay and I'm moving it into three circles. And I'm rolling it in my hands. One. Roll, roll, roll. And I'm really rolling with this part of my hand. So the ball that I'm making is really staying in here when I roll. Can you see that? Two. Roll, roll, roll. All right, three. Now this is where I need to use vinegar because I'm going to attach these eyeball shapes to my already existing clay. Now, if I had decided to take this piece and pinch up eyeballs, like I could squeeze in here and squeeze in here and it would round up, I don't need to use vinegar. But because I want to attach these circle balls to my piece, I need to use vinegar or else they'll break right off when it dries. It would be such a bummer. So to do that, I'm gonna take some vinegar and I would suggest using like a little container, even like putting it on a plate. You don't need a lot, like the size of a quarter. You don't need very much. I'm just gonna pour mine into my cap because I always use this for clay. But if you're using stuff from your pantry, make sure you don't mix it back together because you don't want all those little clay particles in your food or when you're cooking something. So I'm just putting a little bit in my cap, barely anything. 
And what I'm gonna do is take my finger, and if you're uncomfortable <laughs> dipping, I love the smell of dill pickles, so I don't mind this. But if you're like, ah, you can use a paintbrush <laughs> if you don't wanna use your finger. I just tend to use my finger because it's really easy for me. Now I'm gonna bring the camera back down so you can see how I attach these pieces, okay? Do do. All right, so I have this piece, right? I have some clay balls and I have my vinegar. So what I'm going to do is kind of press in my clay where I want to put a ball before I even do vinegar. Like, okay, so see how I'm kind of making sure it already fits in that spot. Now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my finger or you can use a paintbrush, dip it in my vinegar, dip it on my clay ball, and then I'm going to put those together. Now, I don't want to just leave it like that because I want to make sure it really sticks good. So I'm going to put my finger underneath so I can support the clay. I'm going to take the ball and I'm going to wiggle, wiggle, because I really want this to stick good as it dries. I really want to give it as the best chance to stick really, really great as it's drying. Okay, so do you see that process? I stuck my hand underneath so I'd have something to push against and then I'm wiggling into place. And I want to apply some pressure so it doesn't come off. And I'm gonna repeat that for my next eyeball. Okay, so put some vinegar where I'm gonna stick it. Put some vinegar on the actual eye. And then place it, I have my hand underneath for support. And then I'm gonna wiggle, push, wiggle, push. I want that eyeball to really stick there good as it's drying. Perfect. And I'm going to do the last eye. Okay. I feel pretty good about that. Where I'm going to stick my eyeball and on the eyeball. And notice I'm not using a whole lot. You can kind of see a little bit of a sheen, but it doesn't need to be a lot of vinegar. And I'm going to stick that on there and wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yay! Mm. Okay, so here's my creature so far. He's gonna be a three-eyed monster. Now this stage, I can decide if I just wanna leave them like this, or I could even decide to kind of smooth part of the bottom of the balls into the rest of my piece, which I might do something different. So if I wanna do that, I'm using my best tool ever, my finger. <laughs> And I'm gonna just take it and I'm gonna slowly press from the back of one of my eyes and see how I'm just like slowly kind of pressing down. I'm doing that downward motion into the body that I made. Do, 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 do. I'm pressing down. It's kind of like a smoothing process. This is just gonna give me even a better seal of my eye staying on. So can you see how that smoothed out compared to these two on the sides? I'm not pressing hard and I did it over and over again. But I kind of like the way that looks because I know it's like smooth and really in there. So I'm just taking my finger on my next eyeball and I'm kind of smoothing that into my body. Dun dun. Oh yeah, two down, one more. <laughs> and I'm smoothing this into the back of my head because I still want these to look like really good eyeballs on the front. I'm gonna take my finger again and smooth this down. I think he's gonna be such a cute creature. I might put him in my bathroom, put like a little bar of soap in him. He'd be so cute. Or maybe I could stick, what else could I put in there? Marbles? I don't know. Maybe paper clips, something cool. All right, so here's his big mouth. There's his eyeballs. Now you could start using a toothpick. Really, you can use anything you find around your house to make textures and designs in your monster. So for this guy, if you can see his mouth, I wanted him to have a texture on the opening. So I actually used my toothpick and pressed in around that whole thing like this. Ready? Toothpick, 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 toothpick. So it would be kind of just like a fun design going around the whole mouth. He's so cute. Plus, you know why I like to do this? The green glaze that I'm gonna glaze your pieces with 
likes to dip into cracks. So if you have designs, the green gets a little darker inside the designs. It pools in there. So anytime I can make a little bit of a texture or a design, it's gonna make my green show up a little bit differently. And I think that's pretty cool. All right, here's his mouth. Oh, maybe I should make him eyes. Oh, and you can look around your house, like I said, and look for different tools. This is just a colored pencil, but I like it. See, it's a dull tip right there. I'm gonna use that to make my little eyeballs. Bump, bump, bump. Oh, he's so cute already. And then I can decide what do I wanna add on the side? Maybe I want him to have like little wings. That'd be so cute. Or I'll show you how I made a tail, a little wraparound tail on this guy. He's so cute. So let me show you how I made my tail. This is how we can do eyes, which is kind of fun. And then a tail, what you would do is take another little piece of your clay. That's from your kit. This isn't a super big piece, but this is what I'm gonna use for my tail. So the first thing I wanna do is roll it into a ball, right? Using that middle part of my hands. I think it's always easier to start with a ball. And then I'm gonna roll out a coil. So before I roll out a coil on my table, what I wanna kinda do is make it into that shape beforehand. So I'm gonna kinda pinch this ball so it kind of gets long. Just using my hand. See how it's kind of getting longer now? It's more of an oval than that circle. Pinching it out to the shape I want. And see how I'm turning it too? As I'm pinching, I'm turning because it's kind of helping keep my whole piece the same thickness the whole way down. Okay, so there's my cylinder so far and now I'm gonna roll it on my table. So let's bring the camera down. So to roll out a piece of clay, I am using the palm, where my palm meets my fingers. That's primarily where I'm pressing. So let me show you. I keep my fingers spread and I lift up every once in a while and I kind of move where my hand was placed. Dun, 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 dun. And now for a tail, because tails usually get smaller towards the end. Now I'm gonna focus just a little bit on this end here to make it a little bit thinner. Doom, 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 doom. Can you see how that end is a little bit thinner than this one? Do, 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 do. Okay, so now I have a tail shape. So in order to connect this, I have to use a lot of vinegar because I don't want this falling off. So what I'm gonna do is take my piece of clay that I just made for my tail. I need some more vinegar. <laughs> All right, let's pour some in. So I'm gonna take my vinegar and my finger, or again, remember you can use a paintbrush if you want. And I'm just rubbing vinegar on the tail. Okay. Once I have vinegar on my tail, I can take my guy and kind of line this up on the back and I'm gonna kind of curl it around. Okay, can you see that? So I started approximately where I want it to and I'm pressing that against my whole pinch pot because I want it to stay really good. So right now, this is kind of what it looks like. And it's wrapping around so you can see part of his tail near his face. I think that's so cute. Okay, but now what I wanna do is really make sure that's firm, right? Remember how we talked about you wanna press and kind of wiggle? So I'm gonna put my hand inside his mouth so I have something to push against. And I'm kind of pressing and wiggling. So I don't want this to fall off as it dries, right? So I'm pressing and wiggling. You know what else I'm gonna to do too? I'm gonna to smooth in the back of the tail, just like I did for the eyeballs. So I'm gonna kind of go in here, right? And I'm gonna smooth this into the back of him. Smooth, smooth, smooth. So I won't see the lines of where it connects. I kind of like the way that looks when it looks like it just smoothly goes in. I could even decide that I wanna smooth this whole bottom area. Maybe I will. Cause this part's gonna be sitting on the table anyway. So look at, I'm just doing little finger marks and I'm pulling that tail into my pinch pot. Best tool you have is your fingers. 
right? So I'm just using my fingers to kind of smooth that. And you don't have to do this step if you don't want to. I just think it's nice. Look, at I'm using my fingers too to smooth out any wrinkle marks that I see or any cracks because it works so good. So now look, I've smoothed in that tail the whole way underside where it's gonna sit. Perfect! Okay, so now his tail wraps around his back and you can decide if you wanna do some designs or anything additional on his tail. I love that his tail wraps around to his mouth. Maybe I wanna use my toothpick again and just make little dots. That'd be cute. Or I could make, I could use, ooh, what could I, I have an idea. I could even use the cap to my bottle because it has all these little lines and I could roll it. Oh, that looks so cool. Let me show you up close what that looks like. It's like little crease lines. Oh, is it gonna focus? I think they're too tiny for you to see, but there's little lines all in there. So cool. So be creative, decide what you wanna put on your monster and then you're gonna build this. Now, when you bring it back to the library, I'm gonna take it from there. I'm gonna let it dry out in my house slowly. So then I'll put it in the kiln and the kiln will cook it really hot. <laughs> and then I'll take it out and I'm gonna use a special green glaze that I have. It's like a paint. And when it comes out of the kiln the second time, it'll be all this shiny cool green. And then I'll deliver it back to the library for you to pick up. It's usually about a two week process until you, till I get them back to the library. But after I do that, you'll be able to pick it up and enjoy your monster creature. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. Um, and yay for libraries for summer. See you all later. Bye.